Hello everyone and welcome to SE Geek, the internet's most passionate software engineering show. I am your host, the Software Engineering Geek, and today we're going to be talking about Groovy Collection. So sit back, download a cup of knowledge, because SE Geek begins now. Okay, today we're going to talk about collections. Now, I mentioned collections uh, on the first episode and showed you this API. There's a lot going on with collections, but uh, I'm going to show you some of uh, just the groovy syntax. Um, but definitely check out the API because there's a lot more going on here than what I'm going to be able to show you in this episode. So this is the first uh, time we're actually going to be showing you actual groovy code. So first thing we're going to do is define a variable and we'll call it list and a couple things you'll notice right away is obviously we're using def instead of type I talked a little bit about that in the performance this is just a way to say give me a variable I don't care what type it is so you know we have a variable same thing with uh, functions and methods which I'll talk about later and we're going to assign it a new list and this is the sh the uh, shorthand syntax for an array list you can obviously do the full Java syntax but this will give us a list and what we'll do is we'll just print out the list run that and as you can see we printed out a list now this is very similar to the syntax you might see with uh, you know uh, curly braces in JSON which you know makes this very desirable and a lot more easier to read I think. Um, another thing you'll notice here is we use print line without using system dot out dot print line because you know that's just uh, included imported by default with Groovy and I, I believe uh, Java dot Ling uh, everything in there uh, what was it Java dot Ling I think and there's another one that's just included by default so things like this that you use all the time are just there you don't have to you know specify the whole thing plus you'll also notice no semicolon which is very nice so we have a list so what so what can we do we could do list and we could do you know dot add something like you know one but you know there, there should be a groovier way to do that you know something a little less verbose how about this and we'll run that and you see now we have a list with one element in it which is one okay that's that's all fine and nice but like in JavaScript I should be able to just you know have a list with a whole bunch of elements in it ready to go so let's do this we'll run that and as you can see we have a list with one two three in it um, you know very simple very easy uh, so, you know, that, that's just an overview of lists. Um, and I'll, I'm going to go into more into uh, collections, uh, showing you when, when I get into the, uh, the built-in closures, uh, doing things like uh, dot each and what you can get away with that. Um, but that's, I'm going to save for another episode. So moving on, uh, we're going to start over and just go with map. So... We're going to make a map because there should be a way to easy way built in to do a hash map, right? And there we go. So now we have a hash map. So, and actually, if I do dot class dot, I think it's get name. Oh, no, it's not get name. Maybe it's just name. No, no. Well, for another time, anyways. We'll just stick with this because I don't remember that offhand. Uh, you know, it's very easy to do in an IDE, but I'm just using Sublime here, so I don't have that auto uh, correct. So we have a map. Great. What can we do with a map? Um, well, let's see. We could, you know, say we want to, you know, we could do a dot put. 
and you know do the full syntax of that but there should be an easy way to do that too so we'll do dot put and we'll do first and we'll set that equal to one and we'll run that and we get first colon one now notice the parentheses uh, here they these are required for when you're using this particular syntax however if we did first up here instead of this you know pre-initializing it when we do it in the first line like I showed you with the uh, the list notice we don't need the parentheses up here unless you have something that has say a space in it or you know special characters because this will not run you get in there but this runs just fine and now you have a hash map so okay that's great um, let's see what else we can do there there are other operators uh, here so let's do um, let's see comma second two and let's do two in map and we'll print And that comes out false. Oh, wait a minute. Because 2 is not a key in map. But I think second. Oops. Oh, wait a minute. Yep, we have to use the parentheses. Second comes in true because it is a key in map. Now, if we just change this to, say, a list, do 1, comma 2 and do two let's just uh, make this uh, make sense because we're going back to a list we run that we come back true so we could also say if um, cat is in list and this will be obviously false because cat is not in list but if we add cat to list it comes back true so that's you know what one another uh, neat little feature that you know you can get uh, within these collections so there's a lot of stuff that you can do with collections um, as I said I'm going to be talking about uh, things like dot each dot collect um, find results and uh, those are I'm going to talk about when I talk about built-in closures within another episode which allow you to uh, iterate and over uh, collections in a, somewhat of a functional style using closures. So that's all I have for now.